Vintage Toys Part 4. This video features my very small collection of British model aeroplane engines. Starting with this one from the control line days, this is a Mills 0.75, and it's not a modern replica, it's one of the originals. This is a diesel engine, and one word of caution, depending on what you're pumping into the engine to lubricate it, depends on what's going to happen. As I was flicking the propeller like this, once or twice the engine started to fire and the propeller went over more than one revolution. That's because the Mills 0.75 is a diesel engine. If I remember rightly, this engine is called a DC Wasp and it's a glow plug engine. And this won't start unless you connect a battery and put some proper glow fuel in it. So far so good, both of these engines turn over OK. In this clip I'm fitting some silicone rubber fuel tubing to it. Not that I'm going to run it, I just think it looks better. Most of the engines featured in this video, apart from the one right at the end, are very old engines. I used to have one of these fitted in a control line plane when I was about 14 years old, and DC stands for Davis Charlton. The next engine to look at is this very small diesel. A lot of people get the name of this engine wrong. Without looking very closely at the casting writing on the side of the crankcase, I thought these engines were called Albion engines. But if you look carefully, the writing reads Albon. This is not a very good example, it's quite dirty. But my good friend Bernard Langworth, whose claim to fame is that he's been control line world champion several times in his life, put me right on the incorrect pronunciation of Albon and gave me a top tip, use Swarfiger to remove all the grime from the engines. As you can see by these dirty engines, I haven't done that yet. This next engine is a DC Spitfire, Davis Charlton Limited Spitfire. Or at least I think that's what it is. It's quite a long time since I played with these. And surprisingly, they're not very gummed up. As you can see, this one turns over quite easily, although I think the contrapiston in the cylinder head is probably stuck. This is definitely not recommended to free the contrapiston. I've filled the cylinder with WD-40 to see whether the hydraulic pressure loosens the contrapiston, but it didn't. I'm not putting hardly any pressure on, because if I do, I'll break something. The engine turns over OK as it is. I would think if I wanted to run it and bought some diesel fuel, it would probably work anyway. These were very popular in control line planes many, many years ago. But then control line engines got bigger. This engine, as you can see, really is very grimy, so it will be a good candidate for the Swarfiger test. I found these engines in the bottom of a box in the workshop. And I'm pretty confident that all of them would run if I bought some fuel and a battery for the glow plug. In this box are a couple of interesting engines. This one is an ED Baby, made by a company called Electronic Developments. I presume they must have also made electronic devices. This engine is quite collectible, and it's in much better condition because it's been in a box. I don't know how old these are. I haven't had them for long. I don't know where they came from, but I acquired them about five years ago. When I look at engines of this size and type, it takes me back to a time when I used to play about with them. I was a member of Dewsbury Model Aero Club, and at that time it was a control line club, because radio control was in its infancy, was very expensive, and I certainly couldn't afford to buy it. I'd never done much with free flight, but one year I won the club raffle, a small tissue paper covered aeroplane with an engine like this stuck in the front. So I bought some fuel, took it up to the local park, filled up the very small tank, started the engine and launched the plane which flew away very quickly and I never saw it again. I didn't do much with free flight after that. This is a bigger ED engine, it's called an EDB. These were very, very popular. And this one is not in quite as good condition as the smaller one. It's a bit gummed up, but with some WD-40 in the exhaust port and some WD-40 in the carburetor, it's soon freed off. I quite like these old engines, there's something good about them. I can't really put my finger on what it is, but there's something good about them. This one has an instruction leaflet, and it's really good to see an exploded view of the engine. I don't know whether it's my imagination, but I don't seem to see exploded views on instruction leaflets anymore. Which is a pity, because just at first glance you can see exactly what you have and how it works. This EDB also came with a piece of paper that shows the initial settings for running it. That's a nice touch. 
I'm saving the best till last. This is a laser engine, and it's not really a vintage toy. It's a few years old, it's not quite the same as the current model, and it's certainly nothing like the original ones, where the glow plug pointed towards the propeller, and removing the glow clip once the engine had started was quite hazardous. This engine is much bigger than the small ones, and even the small ones can do a lot of damage if you get your finger in the propeller. I used to fly control line planes usually on a Sunday morning, and an old man in a suit, on his way back from church, used to watch my friend and I playing with a control line plane. One control line plane I had had a very old McCoy 19 glow engine in it, and it was a terrible thing to start. I got into the habit of going flick, 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 flick on the propeller, then adjusting the needle valve, but it refused to start. My friend was getting quite bored of holding the plane while I flicked the propeller, and he was quite pleased when the man in the suit offered to hold the plane instead. So he's at the back of the plane holding it by the wings, and I'm at the front flicking the propeller vigorously and adjusting the needle valve, but then the engine started, and for some reason I stuck my finger through the propeller arc to adjust the needle valve because I'd done it so many times. It was very painful, I still have the scar on one of my fingers, and the man in the suit became spotted with blood all over his new suit. I never saw him again after that. This story, by the way, has nothing to do with the laser engine, I certainly would not want to get my finger stuck in one of these. Laser engines are by far my favourite. This is a Laser 80. I used to have a few and sold them all to a friend of mine. I think I'll have a look online and see if they're still selling them. The good thing about lasers when you buy them new, you get your initials stamped on the crankcase, which is a nice touch. And that concludes this video about British model aeroplane engines. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.